would like to invite uh, the dear asset management product lead and of risk and compliance at Wix to teach us after we have learned about failing faster, not failing harder, and walking that fine line between uh, loss and insult to go into how to approve payments. So hi everybody, good morning. I'm Asa Zaidman and today we're going to talk about how to say yes without feeling guilty in the sense of how can we approve payments as a guiding policy for our company. A couple of words about myself. I've been working at Twix for the past two and a half years. Uh, as a product manager, I've been in the product management arena for the past 17 years, specifically in the payments industry for the past eight years, uh, where I focus specifically on risk, compliance, underwriting, and processing. What are we going to talk about today? First, a bit of background about Wix, about the issue we had. Uh, we're going to talk about the shift in perspective that we did. We will talk about how we did it. Um, and we'll talk about the results of what we did and what we plan for the future. So a couple of words about Wix. I hope you, most of you know Wix. Well, Wix provides a professional website and an e-commerce platform, meaning our users can create easily their own websites. Specifically now, we are talking about merchants, small medium businesses who create their own websites. It works pretty well. We have over 248 million users at 190 countries. And we also provide them a payment platform. So me, as a user, as a merchant, I can now sell my goods, my services to my buyers, my, let's call them users of users. And they can pay me using Wix's payment platform. Now, let's dive a dip deeper into some 10th grade philosophy. Friedrich Nietzsche wrote that whoever fights monsters should see to it that in the process, he does not become a monster. And if you gaze long enough into an abyss, the abyss will gaze back into you. Now, the first sentence can be very interesting for our industry. What happens when the fraud fighter becomes a fraudster? But this is not for today, uh, maybe for FraudCon 2024. Uh, but the second part of the sentence here, I think, will be interesting. When you, as a risk analyst, and I guess most of you are in the industry, when you look at fraud every day, dozens of cases every day, eventually everything seems like fraud. You see something, what's the catch? How is he trying to trick me? Um, and that affects us. Uh, we are humans. Uh, and that affected also us. When I'm looking at what we used to have at Wix, uh, in this sense, well, uh, with payments, we used to decline too much because our decline systems were managed by people like us, risk analysts, and we see fraud in everything. So uh, back then we relied on the payment service providers anti-fraud engine where each transaction was routed to its relevant PSP and it went through their anti-fraud service. Now, these engines are usually, you know, rule-based, if-then-based, and the person who wrote the rules are us, fraud analysts. And no means no is a good approach for life in general. But when it comes to payments, well, we became like porcupines were, you know, were showing our stings outside. So just give me a shadow of a doubt and I will decline your transaction. If we look at it at a, let's say as, as a diagram, it's very easy to understand this. The buyer submits a payment. According to the processor, we send it to the PSP. The PSP has its own anti-fraud engine. It analyzes the transaction. If it has low risk, then great, let's approve it. If it's high, not low risk, let's decline it. And that's all there is to it. Now, we had to have a shift in our perspective. Why? Because Wix is a user-centric company. Now, many companies 
say that about themselves or want to believe that about themselves, uh, I wish to believe that we are truly so. Uh, eventually, we understood that for the benefit of our users, our merchants and their users, the buyers, we should approve more payments, more than we used to. Now, our acceptance rate figures were okay. They were even good, but we wanted more. How do we take such decisions at wits? First of all, we look at the issue and the issue we had was we declined too many transactions. We defined our goals, our KPIs. Now, this is easy. We want a higher acceptance rate and we want a lower fraud rate and we want our users to be happier and we want a lower operational cost. Now, I want to be rich and healthy and to have the best motorcycle in the world. Now, that's all nice, but okay, which comes first? And for us, it was very clear acceptance rate was the top KPI, more important than the fraud rate. Once we decided that, we could look into the data. We could see the numbers, we could see the figures, we can understand what was going on. And we talked with our users. One of the things with Wix being a user-centric company is we actually talk with our users. We call them, we communicate with them, we ask them questions, they provide us answers. And when we talked with our users, we understood that we really have a problem. For example, we had a merchant who sold hot baths. Now, a hot bath costs thousands of dollars each. Makes sense. Now, when you provide an anti-fraud engine, a transaction of a few thousand dollars, eight thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, it has a higher risk, high risk decline. Now, that merchant was furious and for great reasons. He told us, I'm on the phone with my buyer right now. I'm talking with her. She's legit. I know her. Why are you declining that transaction? Uh, it's a real pain. Now, that's for real business. I mean, it's very easy to approve 99% of transactions when most of them are $15 transactions. But what do we do with these $1,000 transactions? So we also looked for inspiration. We looked what our competitors are doing. We looked at what other companies in the payment arena are doing. And eventually, we reached an idea for a solution and we moved forward to execution. Now, our new approach, well, clearly the first and easy step would be to take our risk analysis above the PSP level, meaning there is no sense in having processor one analyzing risk for its transactions and processor two doing the same for their transactions. We should take it up, let's call it to the gateway level, one anti-fraud engine for all. That's nice, but how can we approve more without overexposing ourselves to fraud? <laughs> and our answer was, do not say no. Do not decline. Say yes. How can we do it? By enabling the buyer to prove their transaction's legitimacy. How can we do it? We give that buyer a chance. This chance should be strong enough that if our buyer succeeds with it, then we can know for sure that her transaction is not fraudulent. Now, let's say this buyer failed with that specific chance. No problem. Let's give her another chance, which is also strong enough. And if she fails, that chance will give her another chance and another chance and another chance, theoretically, till the end of times. We do not want to say no. We just want our buyer to succeed. We want to give her a chance to succeed. We want to, to say it. Now, when we talk about these chances, we got all sorts of them. Uh, a very easy one to understand is the 3D Secure. If the buyer has gone successfully through 3D Secure, chances are the transaction is legit. There are also other tools. We can use a consortium-based validation, meaning we're asking other merchants regarding that specific buyer. Is she legit? Do you know her as legit? And if most of them say, yes, we know her very well, she is legit, then probably she is legit. If it's a known user, we know from the past, a known buyer we know from the past, 
uh, and we can verify that she controls her email, then probably it's her. Same goes for, for her phone. We can also ask her to verify her social media profile. And we can also even ask to verify that she's physically holding the payment card that she's planning to use. Now, the nice thing about these chances is that it's fully modular. We can add more chances. We can remove chances. We can change the sequence of the chances. It's very easy to control. So eventually our buyer faces a chain of chances and all she needs to do is succeed in one. How would it look? Very simple. Our buyer submits a payment. It first goes through an anti-fraud engine. If the risk level is low, no problem, we approve. Sent to processing. If the risk level is not low, then we provide the first chance. Did the buyer succeed? If, if yes, great, send to processing. If no, give another chance. Succeeded, move to processing. Failed, give another chance. Now, these chances can also, uh, they can be either behind the scenes doing all sorts of calculations or uh, presenting something to the buyer, some code to enter, some uh, button to click, etc. Eventually, we keep on providing more and more chances. Now, we had a few challenges with actually executing this. First of all, there are many moving parts here because we wanted to change our anti-fraud engine and move it to the gateway level and then starting to add multiple chances. Not that easy. Uh, the way we did it was to handle one item at a time while orchestrating it together and doing it in a phased approach. Now, this also means we had a lot of dependencies, um, meaning again, we have here uh, multiple tools. Some are internal, some are external. And when one thing gets stuck, it has an effect on everything else. Here, what we did was to make sure that everyone was involved and engaged as early as possible. So no one will be surprised later on. A question was also, how do we test it? How can we make sure that this idea actually works? First, we've done a proof of concept. We've took some offline data, we've ran it, we've seen, yeah, it can work, it can make sense. After we implemented it, we ran it in silent mode, meaning running in the background. This whole thing ran, but without actually taking actions. So a transaction went through this process. We wrote down the result of this process and then pushed it forward uh, using our regular engines. So eventually we can make sure that uh, it actually provides great results. And eventually we had an A-B test uh, comparing our old tools and engines to this new process. Now, WITS is not a startup. Had it been a startup, we could probably do it in a very, very short time. But we are uh, a large organization. We have security, we have procurement, we have multiple teams. Uh, and here, the most important lesson I think we got was to engage. Now, we all know as people from the risk industry that it's not fun for the management to talk about risk. Risk is no fun. Risk is all about bad things that might happen. So what we did, we didn't present it as our aim is to lower chargebacks. It was, we want to approve more. We want to say yes more. We want to, our users to be happier. We want them to process more. We want ourselves to process more. That is different. This is something which is easier to engage with. And indeed, we got all the teams on board very early. Everybody knew what the end goal was. So it was much easier to do it. How did we do it in practice? Well, we, first of all, we created what we call the risk engine, which is actually the orchestrator. This orchestrator receives a transaction does its, let's call it magic, and responds with a recommendation. Send to processing or do not send to processing. But inside, mm -hmm. this is the orchestrator which actually sends a transaction first to the anti-fraud engine and then to chance number one, and then to chance number two. And it has its logic of 
if then and it has its own policy rules first present this chance but if it's a, a buyer of another type then use this chance etc we move our anti-fraud engine again from being inside the PSP level to being above them at the gateway level having one agnostic anti-fraud engine for all transactions and we have a mix of both internal and external tools we use some third-party based tools we use some internal tools we still use a few policy rules because eventually we do have a few policies that we want to keep in place and everything is orchestrated inside this orchestrator we released it about four months ago it's working fully for a hundred percent of uh, our users bias and if we're looking at the KPIs we mentioned earlier well the acceptance rate went up especially with the high volume transactions which were our users pain now again it's very easy to approve most of the five dollar ten dollar transactions because what's the risk but what happens with a thousand dollar transactions and today we approve many more of them significantly many more because even if the anti-fraud engine got scared by the ten thousand dollar transaction still our next chance has proved that this buyer is legitimate we should not be afraid of that buyer so we approve the transaction so we have a higher acceptance rate especially when we calculate it by volume if we're talking about our fraud rate it went down now it's easy to say well you've changed your anti-fraud engine maybe the new one is better it is better but even had we stayed with our former engine it would have uh, the charge rate would have gone down and why because how do we calculate fraud rate fraud divided by approved volume now our approved volume has gone up because our acceptance rate volume has gone up so the divider has gone up so the fraud rate has gone down our users are happier naturally we approve if we approve more and our fraud rate is lower they have all the reasons to be happier they process more especially those who sell for high amounts and the cherry on top is that our operational cost went down now this is as a result specifically uh, from changing our anti-fraud engine but as a result we're now paying less approving more and getting less fraud so eventually we got here a home run and this actually works and works great what are we planning ahead first we cannot just stop and rest we want to optimize our results how can we do it we can always add more and more chances uh, today we do not have an infinite number of chances eventually after x number of chances if uh, our buyer failed then the transaction will not be sent to processing it will be declined we want to add more and more and more chances we cannot get to infinity but we can add enough chances that fraudsters will eventually not be able to prove themselves as legit while legit buyers can go through successfully we can also tweak the thresholds of each chance by itself because each of these chances is testing one aspect and we can tweak its results to make it by itself more accurate and of course we can play with the sequence of the chances uh, who says that the anti-fraud engine should be first it's a good idea but it's not necessarily the best one so we can do multiple tests with changing the sequence of the chances another thing that we're doing now well if we provided such a great service for our users for these merchants why don't we use it for ourselves i mean wix as a merchant wix sells uh services to its merchants to its users we sell premium packages we sell third-party services we sell uh, all kinds of ads and marketing uh, services so why not use it for our own so indeed that's something we have started to work on so uh, the bottom line is uh, and that I think correlates to the previous session it's very easy to say no I mean uh, 
the easiest thing, as was indeed said, is just to decline. But that's not what we want. That's not what uh, we aim for. And once we take this shift, we can really approve more uh, without suffering from more fraud. Thank you very much.